Great day, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to the Strategic Possibility Show, where we discuss success and growth to help you launch potential in your personal and professional life. My name is Emmett Ferguson, and I am your host. And today I've got an amazing episode with special guest Amy Lee Westervelt. She is great friends with Adora Evans, Adora Crystal Evans, who was on a previous show. What I love about the, her, the group of people, this core group of people that I had an opportunity to meet is they all have these amazing skills that can help you bring out the best in yourself. And Amy Lee is a empath. Uh, she, helps, she works with empaths and helps them uncover their leadership abilities and really release their potential and things like that. And Amy Lee, before we started, you did mention something about, you know, becoming what you wish you had as a mentor when you were growing up. Can you go a little bit into like that, like what you do and how you help people and how you help people to uncover the fact that they're empaths? Yeah. So one of the things that is really interesting about empaths and highly sensitive people, and just real quick, I just want to define the difference between those two. An empath is a person who feels the emotions and actually feels the energetic presence of other people in their own body, sometimes having difficulty differentiating between those feelings, whether they belong to themselves or not. Whereas a highly sensitive person, another group that I work with, they tend to be more, they just feel their own feelings very deeply. And I know a lot of people use these interchangeably which is kind of a disservice to both because, you know, each one has its own caveats. That being said, yeah, what I was saying was I, I really wish that I had known I was an empath when I was growing up because I think it would have really helped me navigate the world in a much better way. And I would have known more how to deal with the way that I move through the world. What I do is teach my clients how to, and and really my free community too, I teach them how to reframe the way that we look at the world and the way that we interact with it in a way that is more congruent to the way that the people around us interact with the world so that we're not constantly kind of clashing with the way that things are going on. So had I known that growing up, had I known that there were other people like me that felt things deeply, that could tell other people's emotions sometimes before even they could, I think it would have saved me, like I was telling you, a lot of pain and suffering as a child, as an adolescent, as a young adult. Um, But then again, you know, there's always that aspect of maybe, you know, that I went through that so I could be this beacon, so I could be this asset for people who are going through it now. Amazing. Yeah. That you touched on a great point there in that, you know, we might not be able to change, change the past, but maybe all of the challenges that we had helped to contribute to, you know, who you've become and all the lessons that you're able to help people through or all the different life difficulties. So you were differentiating between the difference between, you know, just being sensitive to your own emotions versus being sensitive to others. What's like, and you mentioned as you grow up, grew up, you didn't know that you were an empath. So what is some of the signs that, you know, someone's going through life and uh, what are some of the signs that make them, that they can say, oh, maybe I am more empathic and let me explore this more. Like, what, what would you say is a thing for that? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. And it's one of the, one of the questions I get all the time. And so, yes. Yeah, so and as far as highly sensitives go, yes, it's their emotions, but it's really any of their senses. It's any sense that's heightened. So I just want to point that out. But as far as empaths go, some of the things that an empath might feel, if you ever walk into a room and you sit down with a group of people and somebody brushes the hair out of their eyes and you're like, oh gosh, are they mad at me? Did I say something? If you're constantly second guessing body language, if somebody walks into work and says hi one day and the next day they say hi, and you're like, oh gosh, what did I do? You immediately, you can pick up on the difference in their energy and then you radiate that back to yourself. So that's one reason um, you might, or that's one way you might know that you're an empath. If you're a person who, when you watch television, maybe you have a really hard time watching things with really deep character stories. I know for me, I used to, (laughs) growing up, I used to love SVU and all those law and order shows and criminal minds. And I got to this point one day where I just, couldn't physically watch them anymore because I was so emotionally invested in those characters and their pain and their suffering. So that's another one. 
we overthink things to the nth degree. Empaths are famous for what's called intellectualization. We don't just want to know what happened. We want to know why it happened. And we ruminate on the why. Sometimes to the point, you know, if you're not an empath, you might say something like, eh, don't worry about it. It's water under the bridge. An empath has never seen water under any bridge. We don't understand why we want to know why things happen. We want to know why did this person treat me this way? We want to know why did this outcome happen the way it happened? We need to understand the trajectory behind what happened. And, and we, can, we can get lost in that sometimes. Another thing on kind of a more somber note, you'll find that a lot of empaths um, and highly sensitive, but especially empaths, they have emotional or narcissistic abuse in their past. And that is because as a person who is subject to that kind of abuse, we tend to, we have heightened senses of when we need to get the heck out of there. Our fight and flight is like super, super concentrated because if you're in a situation where somebody one minute is going to be super duper nice to you. And then five minutes later, maybe after having a couple drinks or something, you know, maybe an hour later and they turn on you, you need to be able to notice those personality nuances instantaneously. And that's where some empaths come from as well. Does that kind of help you get an idea of who we are? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, coming from, and, and I don't know if this only relates to people who might be overly analytical, but you know, sometimes I, I feel like I'm, I tend to be overly analytical. So how would you differentiate hypothetically between, you know, walking in a room and simply overthinking things versus if maybe I am an empath? So in terms of how you're overthinking would be what I would ask. If, are you overthinking the, um, the energetic connection between you and the people? Is it that you're like, oh gosh, I look silly. I'm wearing a funny t-shirt or I am not qualified to speak with these people because they're all doctors. That's more on the analytical side. Whereas, oh, look at the way that they're looking at each other as I'm walking in and they're making eye contact or look at how he's looking down at his phone or this girl to the left of me is really quiet. So I would say it's more of an energetic feedback as an empath, whereas it's, it's just very, like you said, analytical situational things that, have some, that don't have anything to do with your personality, your trait, nothing that you could personalize to I'm not good enough. Like an empath is really good at, you know, we have lots of self-loathing thoughts, self negative self-talk. And so there's a lot of like, oh, well, they don't accept me or they're looking at me a certain way because I'm less than. Whereas with an analytical person, it's, it's more, hey, you know what? I don't have three degrees. Oh, you know, I, I, I'm not part of their club. It's, it's a different kind of ostracization than it is as an empath where it's kind of out of the clear blue sky. Very interesting. And I, I think you ex uh, explained it very well in the terms of like when you're walking into a room and one way is, you know, you're looking at other people and, you know, trying to understand them better and, you know, get a feel for their energies while the other, I guess, just the analytical person is thinking, oh, you know, what do I, what should I do next? Or like, what do I do to meet the coolest person in the room? Or, you know, how am I carrying myself? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I took away in a sense. And also yeah. you're not yeah. going to get that energetic feedback. Like you're not going to, and, and I don't mean you, but an analytical mm -hmm. non-empath sure. person is going to walk into a room and go, oh, hey, all the people over there are waving at me. Awesome. Okay, great. And the people over there are sitting and they're paying attention to whatever they're doing. An empath is going to walk into that room and feel pockets of anger, feel pockets of anxiety, feel pockets of stress because it's energetic connection. So, it, you know, if you think about radio frequency, like when you're listening to a station, you change your radio to a new frequency, to a new vibration. And the same thing goes for empaths. There are energetic frequencies among all the people. It's why lots of empaths get anxious on trains or at concerts because there's so many energetic overlap that an empath can feel. And I know it sounds so crazy, but if you truly look at the characteristics of energy, it, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense that a person could potentially feel that. And they've done so many tests and, 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 and different, you know, blind studies and things like that. And they've proven this. Okay, let's do an experiment out there in podcast land. Take your hands and rub them together super fast. Like enough that you get friction in your hands. And as you're doing that, you notice that your hands start to get really hot. 
and then let go of your hands and just put your two hands as close together as you can without them touching. Can you feel that energetic field in there? Yes, uh, I totally did. And makes me makes me realize, you know, the idea that if there is, there is definitely that heat energy that people give off, you know, what else are we, you know, mm-hmm. potentially putting out there? Broadcasting. And, Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And also in terms of leadership and being empathetic, you know, you hear about being an empathetic leader and having like empathy and all of those things. So where might empathy by the way i hope i uh, did you finish your the exercise oh absolutely i just oh, okay. wanted you to feel it i wanted you to have that aha moment and say <laughs> okay. wow i can feel energy yeah yeah definitely yeah. even my hands were about like you know maybe a centimeter apart and, you know you could definitely feel that heat and it's like what other energies are we giving off if there exactly. is that even if if it's just heat or something else what else could it be and just um, opening know. that door, just opening that, that idea. Oh gosh, what else? You know, you, as soon as you open that, then those possibilities just kind of start cascading and you're like, you see it everywhere. <laughs> sure. And oh yeah. So going back to leadership in terms of the whole leadership right. thing, you know, where do you find that empaths tend to have difficulty when it comes to leading a team or leading a project? And um, also uh, on the other side of that, what are some of the strengths that they have that can really, if they were to harness it, that could help launch them? So I guess the challenges and the benefits. You are speaking my language right now because I actually have a free ebook. I'll give you the link to it um, to put in there so everybody can have it that talks specifically about the strengths and weaknesses of an empath. And leadership is definitely one of those. What I will tell you, I kind of came up with this a couple of weeks ago, this phrase that an empath is the only person who can be absolutely right and absolutely wrong at the same time. And that reason is because we are really determined to be at fault. <laughs> we love to find a reason why we didn't do something right. We weren't good enough. We weren't smart enough. We didn't act fast enough. We are the first ones to throw ourselves in front of the bus. Again, going back to that self-loathing, some of us have been through emotional abuse. And so we've been conditioned by and large to believe that our feelings come last, our needs come last. So as, as leaders, one of the weaknesses we have is that a lot of times, especially when we don't have established boundaries, we tend to kind of, I guess they call it falling on the cross or something. We tend to be the person who feels like we have to put ourselves completely out so that everybody else can reach their goals. And so if you are an unaware empath and you don't know this about yourself, you might go out of your way to make sure that the rest of the team is cared for. You're looking left and right and saying, okay, do they have what they need? Do they have what they need? Another, you might be an empath. If you ever go out in social situations and you're the one who goes and says, are you guys okay? Does everybody have everything? Are you having fun and you and you don't even allow yourself the the pleasure of enjoying whatever it is you're doing so take that to a leadership perspective and you're that person who potentially is just so caught up in everybody else reaching their goals that your goals kind of get left for last and you can end up getting you know walked all over you can end up having your project sabotage. There are all kinds of different things that to be aware of as an empath. Conversely though, as an empath, you're also uniquely equipped to be able to look at a situation and say, okay, I see the group dynamics between these two people and I can sense tension over there. There's something going on with them. Uh, A couple of weeks ago, I was in, I had a a mastermind that I was in with a couple of, of other business owners and I could sense that one of them was just kind of pulling away. I couldn't really tell why. Um, but I could tell that she was kind of backing off of the project. She was getting quiet. So what did I do? I went and I messaged her one day and I said, Hey, how's it going? Had a, just a regular conversation with her. And after a couple of minutes, she said, you know, I've actually been thinking I wanted to talk to you, which I was like, duh. And so she proceeded to tell me, I have this going on in my life and I'm not able to participate at the level that I want to. And I said, yeah, I kind of, I kind of knew that. And she was shocked. She was like, how did, how did you know? I said, well, I could feel it in your energy. So in some ways we're very good at looking at a situation and saying, okay, this needs to change this person. You know, I really see this person's potential, but maybe she's confused about the situation or, you know, she's looking at the way these two people are getting along and I can 
tell that there's kind of some triangulation going on. So there's a lot of different group dynamic pieces that you can see as an empath that maybe you couldn't if you weren't. Very interesting. So definitely, I even think that a lot of the weaknesses or not weaknesses, but the challenges that they have to overcome, you know, in terms of thinking about everybody else's goals and everything and not focusing on your own. I think those can also end up being strengths if you can harness it in in the right way. Oh, absolutely. Yes. It sounds like it's a very helpful thing to have to under truly understand like, you know, group dynamics, if you're able to manage it and be able to really focus on that strength. So, you know, thank you for sharing all of that. So in terms of how to develop leadership or more empathy, because I think that's a big thing in the workplace nowadays, you know, I constantly see articles on LinkedIn and and business Mm -hmm. leaders talking about empathy and everything. So take a super technical person. You know, for the most part, I think we assume, and I don't like to generalize, but we consider that engineers and technical people are technical, they're analytical, you know, they're brilliant at what they do, but they're, they don't always have that empathy. So what is something that they can do that might at least help push them in that direction to become more better leaders through empathy? So I think the biggest thing that helps with empathy is seeing people as people. And I think that's something that a lot of us who aren't empaths have a hard time with, right? Like we, you know, I know a lot of the clients that I've worked with over the years, for example, in the direct sales space, they are always talking about how they want to grow their team, grow their team, grow their team. And I always say, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to draw where all the people that need to fall into the different places on, you know, on your uh, leadership structure. And I want you to give them faces and I want you to give them lives and I want you to give them children and hopes and dreams. And I want you to, from this moment, even before you meet these people, understand that these are entire lives. These are other humans that you're potentially going to be not responsible for, but you're going to be part of their story. So I would urge, you know, anyone in a leadership position who feels like they need to work on that empathy part, just make it a point if you have a giant team, you know, and just to give you some background, by the way, um, I did have a network marketing career before I started doing this coaching thing where I had uh, 10,000 people in my downline. So I'm not just saying this like, oh, hey, this is something I thought might work. It's something that worked very well for me. Just pick like five or six people in your organization and just either shoot them a message or get on the call with them and just have a conversation, you know, Hey, how's it going? What's going on with you this week? What's something that I can do to help you get to your goal? What is something that you're really worried about that I might be able to assuage that fear? And so I would, you know, depending on what kind of organization you have, maybe you only have a couple people, maybe once a week you get on a coffee chat and you get your seven people on your team. And all you guys do is sit around and drink coffee and talk about what's going on with them and just in a very boundary centric, like I don't think you should go in there and talk about what's going on with your spouse or anything like that, but something that's a social middle ground and just get to know people. Um, The more that you look at people as people and look at their dreams and their aspirations, as opposed to cogs in your wheel of motion for your business, the more they're going to appreciate the business and they're going to work harder and the more cohesiveness you're going to have within your brand and 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 in your organization. Very cool. By the way, I hear child in the background. How old old are you? Oh, yes. So I have five children under the age of eight. Yes. And my son is, um, he's going to be nine months on the 21st and my husband is changing his diaper. So I apologize for the screaming. That's so cute. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> I, was just, I was just curious, you know, it's, it's so interesting. All right. So what I really uh, liked about that, what you were just saying is that literally writing down the story of people, it sounds like it's not like this complex, like how, how do I become an empath? It's literally like, you know, taking someone who probably would benefit from writing things down and, you know, using that as a tool to get to know people better and improve their empathy. So that, that sounded like a very, as someone who likes practical exercise, it sounded very practical and I can really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing that. And oh, my pleasure. also you mentioned, and also to learn a little bit more about you uh, in terms of when you were growing up and <laughs> you, know, you said you had some difficulties that you went through and there was a lot of like different challenges and then, you know, mm-hmm. you didn't know you were an empath. So can you explain a time or like, you know, maybe it was a process of a whole three five to five years that you were, you know, trying to uncover 
you know, what it meant to be an empath and all of that. Can you talk a little bit about that for anyone who might be going through a similar experience? Sure. So uh, growing up, I, I always noticed that I overthought things. Um, this is way before inception. I used to think about thinking and then I'd think about thinking about thinking. And then when I got to about the fourth level of that, I kind of had to cool it. I was very, so I had um, my, my father um, was a narcissist. He had narcissistic personality disorder or whatever, but basically he conditioned me while I was growing up to feel like I always had an agenda. Like I, I didn't have true good, you know, uh, benevolent feelings. They were always for some purpose. And so I grew up with a very low sense of, of self-worth because I always thought, well, you know, I don't, I don't really want to help people. He said, I only want to help people because it's going to benefit me. So that's how I was conditioned growing up. I, when I, after I had had my first um, child, we were living in Alaska. My husband was in the military. um, And I was speaking to my life coach one day. um, And she's amazing, by the way. And um, she, she wrote a book for empath. It's called the happy empath. Um, I'll get you the link for that later if you want it. And, um, she, she said to me, you know, have you ever thought about the fact that you might be an empath? And I was like, well, what's an empath? And this was probably, I don't know, six years ago. And, um, I said, you know, I don't really know what that is. And she said, I want you to read this book. She said, I want you to read this book. It's called adult children of emotionally image for parents, a skinny book. So started reading it. And as I was reading this book, it was literally like, Hey, if this is you, then this, this is what's going on. This is the type of parent you have. And if I could just, I, I don't think I can put into words the quantum healing that happened from reading that silly, skinny little book, because it went from Amy Lee, this is your situation. And, and something you did in that situation caused this outcome versus, Hey, this is a type of parent and this is how they act. And you were someone who was in that situation. And it just took all of the personalization and so much suffering just evaporated, if that makes any sense. Like it, it just felt like all of a sudden it wasn't about the way that I shut the door. It wasn't about the fact that I answered my dad back if I had said this instead. It had to do with the type of parent he was and the type of situation I had been in. And that just, it was such a weight off my shoulders. And from that moment on, I was like, I need to be part of, of showing people this path. Like, and then I proceeded once I got rid of that, I mean, that, you know, it was like, it was crazy because then I manifested, you know, multi-millions of dollars. I got my husband out of the military. I bought my dream home. I, I created the life that I'd always desired because I didn't have this ball and chain of suffering anymore. So I would say it was definitely really a significant moment for me. And, and that's kind of what I try to provide for my clients at this point. And, and just even the people in my community that don't work with me, but just hang out in that energy is just that idea that, yeah, this isn't about the way that you behave. This is about, hey, you were in this situation and that's how you dealt with it. Very nice. And and thank you so much for uh, sharing that story, despite, you know, some of the the tougher things that you went through um, to to be able to share that. And looking at our loss of our train of thought. No worries. While you're thinking of that, one thing I want to say real quick is just that, um, a lot of people too, you know, they might think, and, and I, I say this very cautiously, and I am not a doctor and I'm not a therapist and I am not, you know, a psychiatrist. There is a lot of, of overlap between empathic qualities and what some people might think to be mental illness. Some of depression comes as a result of being an empath. There are definitely people who um, have, I personally suffer from general anxiety. A lot of that has to do with being an empath. And so, you know, some of the qualities that we might be like, oh, there's something wrong with me. I just can't. It's, it's kind of like, like attention deficit. You know, there are people that are like, oh, this is a crutch. And then there are some people like, heck no, this is attention surplus for me. Look at all the things I get done and look at how productive I am. You could look at empath, em- empathy or empathness, you know, cause they're kind of different the same way, because on one hand it's like, oh, it makes me so sensitive. It makes me feel so, you know, a certain type of way in certain situations, but at the same time, here are the gifts that it provides me. And I like being an empath. And that's kind of where that hump that I had to get over between like, oh, poor me. 
I feel things so deeply and that stinks. And there are lots of communities out there that will, you know, allow you to sit around the campfire and commiserate about that. Whereas I'm more concerned about how do we take what you are and how do we turn that into something that completely revolutionizes the way you live and the way that you show up for others. That's wonderful. And uh, over the course of this conversation, it definitely nailed the, the reasons why empaths help to create that better, those better connections and everything. In terms of like coaching and everything, in one area you're coaching uh, people who are empaths and everything, but how can someone who maybe they're leading a team who maybe isn't naturally empath, what would you say about them, you know, how, how they could work better with empaths? Well, you know, I, I, I think it's kind of a, a double-edged sword because on one hand, I think that the, the, the tectonics between them and the empath, if they're a little bit, you know, uh, rough are probably by design so that they can learn the way that an empath is. And it's probably kind of part of their journey to become more empathic. So if you find that you're like, oh gosh, this girl's just so sensitive and I, I can't figure out how to navigate that, that might be, might be by design as part of their journey. But that being said, um, I have a lot of business friends who are like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not a mindset coach. I, this isn't where I shine. Like I'm the business person. I'm all about the analytical stuff. And I would say, um, you know, just validating, just being able to say, I don't feel that, you know, like for example, my husband, not an empath whatsoever, not a narcissist or anything, but not an empath. And he doesn't feel things the way that I feel them. But what he has learned is to acknowledge that I feel them. And that goes such a long way. So like, we'll be in a situation and instead of him being like, you know, just drop it, it's not a big deal. He'll say, I understand that that's really stressing you out and I want you to know that I'm here holding space for you. So even though he doesn't feel it, he's still acknowledging that I'm feeling it and that makes such a difference. And he'll also, sometimes he'll coach me too and he'll be like, okay, instead of saying this is how it is, try saying this is how you feel because he's right. It's how I feel about the situation. It's not necessarily the situation at base value. And that actually has helped tremendously with our interpersonal communication with each other, because I tend to, you know, project my feelings about a situation onto it. And he gently reminds me that that's your perception of it. That isn't necessarily how, like, sometimes I try to tell him how he feels and he's like, no, you think I feel that way, but this is how I actually feel. And go ahead, you know, do me a favor. Let me decide how I feel. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that because my girlfriend, I think she has some empathic qualities and she, you know, she'll like start laughing at, at certain points in movies or like just start bursting into tears. And sometimes, you know, I'm looking and I'm like, okay, how is she getting that much feeling from what that character is going through? And, you know, you, you shared some very helpful advice there in, you know, sometimes you just got to watch the movie with them and then with her. And then sometimes you know, maybe exactly. it's interesting exactly. to learn, like, what questions can you ask her? So that was very helpful. Thank you. And okay. What about, and this is, I guess, more of like a, a social thing in terms of, you know, men feel as if maybe, you know, being emotional and, and, and empathic might display weakness. And, you know, what do you have to say about that? Just out of curiosity. Well, my husband happens to be an army ranger (laughs) and and he is one of the most sensitive people I know. He is the bread. um, Sorry. I'm the breadwinner. He's the one who takes care of the kids. He does all the cooking, the cleaning, and he is super in touch with his masculine as well as his feminine side. So what I would say to that is be very cautious of entangling or enmeshing is a better word enmeshing the masculine and feminine gender with masculine and feminine energy because masculine and feminine energy exists inside of all of us the masculine energy is that push that let's get it done let's check the boxes the feminine energy is that creative that nurturing side like i know you were saying that you know you were you were writing yesterday um you wrote what would you say twenty thousand words yeah, 20,040 words. Yeah, I don't even think I have that many. It was a challenge. 
were, that's insane. I was like, oh my gosh, I was blown away. But believe it or not, that's actually a form of feminine energy because that's creative. That is that's that right brain, so to speak. So I would just say that there's these these movements of toxic masculinity and toxic femininity. And it's really just comes down to, are you in touch with your creative and your industrious side equally? And sometimes you won't be. Sometimes when you got a deadline, you're like hardcore on that masculine energy. And sometimes you're like, okay, you know what? I'm writing a, you know, the next novel. You might be real hardcore into the feminine energy. I know when I was pregnant with my last child, I was 100% the breadwinner, but I was also creating new life. And so there was definitely this constant imbalance of like, how can I be so masculine and be so feminine at the same time? So I would just caution against that. But that being said, you know, I don't necessarily think that being in touch with your feelings is not manly. Um, I think that allowing anyone, allowing their feelings to take over their life, you know, that can be kind of a a canyon you don't want to fall into. Um, So I would, I would just, I would just urge anybody, you know, who says, oh gosh, you know, I want to get in touch with my feelings, but I don't want to seem like a, you know, like a sissy or something. I would just say, what is your, what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to find out how you feel? How is finding out how you feel not masculine enough and kind of work through what is my outcome? And then what do I want to do? What could I do to get there? And then kind of look at that and say, say, you know what? This doesn't feel wrong. This feels in alignment with what I'm trying. Because at the end of the day, you're doing it because you're trying to get a result. Absolutely. And I, I think you, you touched on a lot there. And the fact is, I mean, when I think when you're a coach, there's so many different possibilities of mm-hmm. what anybody could be going through, what their beliefs are and all of that. And, you know, to uh, dive deep into those areas to understand, you know, what they, they believe around that. I mean, it's different for everybody. So I think uh, what you shared was very helpful in trying to uncover, you know, what it is that we feel about masculine versus feminine energy and, you know, why we believe some things may or may not be, you know, male, right? So <laughs> um, that was great. And thank you so much. And I'm learning so much uh, on this podcast from you and you're sharing such great things. And you mentioned you had a, an ebook specifically to help people discover this, like, was it like a questionnaire or is it like a a guide type of book? So it goes along with what I call my unstoppable empath system. And um, it's an acronym for energy management, manifestation, personal power, affirmations, time management, healthy boundaries and self-care. And so what the ebook does is it takes you through all of those aspects of anyone's life and shows you how an empath would interact with that particular uh, topic and how you can kind of make changes in order to get more out of that area of your life. It also corresponds to um, the chakras in your body, which is so cool. I love when universe downloads like that. Um, And so, you know, different parts of your body, if your chakras are blocked, um, and for those of you who don't know, chakras are just fancy words for energy wheels, right? Back to that energy again. If any of those are blocked, then you might find issues in that area. Some that most folks tend to really enjoy the healthy boundaries section because they're like, you wouldn't believe how many people just don't know what they're, I'm using bunny quotes here, allowed to allow in their lives. Like I've had so many people come to me and be like, I had no idea I was allowed to have these kind of boundaries. And I remember when I was that person, I remember when I was that person who was like, I'm not allowed to be angry. I'm not allowed to feel this way. And so that is something that I think really truly helps a lot of people. And I, I made it free because I just think that it needs to be, I I think everybody should read it. If not empaths, then people who love and, and spend time with empaths for sure. Yeah. And it it sounds like that's a, that the book that you share is like an eye opener in terms of at least getting, uh, helping to reveal these these ideas to people and help them find it within themselves, you know, in, in a very you know condensed fashion. I don't know how long the book is, but um, I imagine that it's, you know, pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. And yeah, I mean, this is, this has been absolutely wonderful. Is it, what else are you working on? Are, are you primarily a coach nowadays or uh, you yep, building, so- building that business? 
I have a coaching business and I I do coach folks one-on-one. I'm very selective about who I coach one-on-one because I truly believe that I need to be so aligned with the clients that I work with. It needs to be somebody that I genuinely know that I can help. I don't just take whoever knocks on the door. And I think that's a really important part of the kind of coaching that I do, especially being an intuitive. So that is one aspect. But I also, I have a course which corresponds to my ebook, which teaches you how to move from that unempowered, anxious, empath to abundant and aware and all that juicy stuff. So it basically takes you through those seven sections of the empath acronym and shows you how to kind of tweak those a little bit for yourself so that when you come into like, for example, manifestation is something that empaths are uniquely talented at. We are so good at manifesting in terms of the law of attraction, but it's also something that because we have such low self-worth, we don't believe we deserve things. We end up manifesting the opposite of what we want. So it's kind of more like, instead of saying, and excuse my language, but I'm going to say it, instead of saying, you know, I suck at manifesting. What we're really doing is I'm really awesome at manifesting things that suck. Do you see the difference? Yeah, that was that was a very good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so that part of the course teaches them how not to do that. So anybody can take that if it speaks to you or if you are married to an empath or you know you're dating one or you have some in your downline or in your business, it's definitely a good resource to have. Wonderful. And I think it's so cool that you were able to turn the word empath into a, a pretty comprehensive acronym for the things that uh, are involved. Great. uh, Just from like that, I guess that technical perspective, you know, of building that brand and that business, you know, how long did that take you? Was it like overnight or was it like? Oh, it was intense. It was intense. I was sitting on my bed and all of a sudden I just heard, guess what? Big idea coming back in December. I started getting these, I, I felt like these energetic downloads, but I couldn't tell what they were. Imagine if like, This is totally crazy, but I'm going there. Imagine if like somebody knocked on your door and dropped off like 50 filing cabinets full of files that were locked in your front hallway and you weren't allowed, you didn't have the key, you weren't allowed to get into them, right? It was like, there was all this information that was in the front hallway of my brain starting in December. And then in January, it was like all of a sudden filing cabinets started opening and I could see these like pieces of paper flying through my head. And like, it was crazy. You know, they were like blowing through the air. And this was one of those things. It just all of a sudden, one day I was sitting on my bed and I was like, you need to write this down. And they just came one by one. It was, and even the S, you know, like it wasn't empath, it was empath. And that was important because that self-care aspect really ties it all back together. And it, it was really kind of a magical moment. And I went and showed my husband, I was like, look at this. And he was like, that's your signature system right there. And it's been gangbusters ever since. I mean, we, we can't believe how, how incredible the reception has been from my community, from the other folks that have taken it. It's just been a really incredible blessing to be able to say, yeah, I was part of that. You know, I don't take 100% credit for it because I believe that it came from source and it was meant to be given and I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. But that being said, just being able to put my name on it is a really magical feeling. Amazing. I, I love like s- stories about when how people get inspired and you know how that comes about because uh, I think a lot of times you know people imagine that you know sometimes you're just sitting there and it just comes but then other times you know people spend years trying to come up with with an idea and then you know over time that thinking compounds and finally they get their ideas so it's great to hear you know how that was able to come about for you and empath seems like a very difficult one to possibly create so um, <laughs> you know congratulations with that and thank you congratulations on growing your business thank you for sharing so many great things on um on strategic strategic possibilities and again everybody you've got an amazing ebook that's going to help you uncover you know, the strengths within yourself as it relates to being an empath and even if you're not it sounds like you're virtually guaranteed to find something in it that's going to help you become a more effective you know, communicator more you know, was there anything that you wanted to uh, to also to mention? Yeah, if yeah. this resonates with you, if you guys feel like, oh my gosh, this is totally me, you're more than welcome to come join my free community on Facebook. It's just gratitudeandglamour.com slash unstoppable. The group is called Unstoppable Empaths. If you'd rather go through the Facebook way, but it's easier if you just have the URL, it goes through my website. Um, and I would love, you know, to accept any friend requests from you guys. Feel free to send me a message. Feel free to reach out, you know, if any of this resonates 
reunited with you. But yeah, that's that's basically how to get a hold of me. <laughs> so cool. And all of that is going to be in the in the description. So look for that. And if you want to contact Amy Lee Westervelt, uh, she see, she's on the social media platform. So definitely reach out. And you, know, you sound like someone who is very open and, and wanting to help as many people as you can uncover their strengths through, through the work that you've done. So thank you for that. And with that, everybody, have a wonderful rest of your day.